on. I'm gonna ride back home now. Continue my story about Japan. Uh, let me tell you, Tokyo itself is kind of. I think I'm gonna have this, this dude. Here. I want that shrimp. Just the way it is. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> my Royal Enfield Classic 350 on my way uh, to PMG Power Sports to have my uh, bike my bikes for a service uh, it's easy the service is very easy actually I could have done it myself but you know again warranty and stuff like that just to have it on record they're gonna do also a valve uh, adjustment or valve check you know when they put the uh, the feeler gauges in and to make sure so I'm bringing it up to them so they can uh, take care of my bike. Cool thing is just, I uh, I got home about, uh, I literally got home about an hour ago. I landed this morning in Newark, in Newark airport. Guess where I was? I just came back from a trip to Japan. Yep, but this, this trip was special. If you've been following me, you know, Sean, my second daughter, that finished military in Israel for two and a half years, went on a, once she was done with the military, she went on a almost a year round the world kind of trip. And I joined her with my oldest daughter about four months ago. Together, the three of us traveled in India. We had a great time. Anyway, uh, she finally finished her, her trip. She ended up in Tokyo, in Japan, with her boyfriend. I met up with them. I flew as a pilot to Tokyo. And we spent, uh, the three of us, we spent like four days together running around Tokyo. And it was, it was just fascinating. It was just beautiful because it's my first time in, in Japan. I was never in Japan. I've heard so much about it. And I was literally so excited to be there. It was really excited to go there. After you've been at one place uh, once, twice, three times already, you lose that initial excitement and I kind of miss that exciting feeling of going to someplace new and, 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 and feeling that excitement. It was a, a trip, it was about a, a 10 and a half, uh, almost 11 hour trip to Japan, Tokyo. Landed in the morning and as we got to the hotel, I met, uh, I met Sean and Guy, her boyfriend. And it was like their res responsibility to take me around because they've been in Japan already for a month and a half traveling. They went camping and ended up in Tokyo. So they've been uh, in Tokyo about a month before that and, you know, briefly ran around Tokyo. And they were going to take me and show me around. And guys, I just woke up. I just woke up from resting. Uh, I, we did uh, we do shifts. A quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. So I just rested and I woke up and we're uh, over China now. This is my first time flying to Japan. And we're somewhere over China. I have no clue where it is. But look at the mountains over here. Oh man, there's an airplane right there. Yeah, or, or it might be a bug on the, on the windshield. Turkish Airlines. Turkish Airlines. Anyway, we're over China somewhere. I'll put my uniform on and I'll uh, change with my buddy over here. He's gonna rest. So I'm gonna be sitting right there right now. That's where I'm gonna be sitting. I'm dressed for ready to see. Today's bird. Fifty fifth floor in Tokyo. Place Sean here came to pick her up and guy her boyfriend right there. <laughs> 
truth is uh, I didn't know what to expect of Japan all you see from Japan like is from movies and karate kid as it, it's like it's a place that I really didn't know what to expect I mean I knew mainly that the, the Japanese are a different different mentality different uh, culture so it was really fascinating let me tell you Tokyo itself is kind of reminded me of New York City smaller uh, shorter skyscrapers there was nothing like really really cool or interesting about you know the buildings so that was not the exciting part of uh, of seeing uh, Japan the biggest for at least the part that I was okay and, and again I was there for four days and I was only in Tokyo I didn't get to see the countryside which I hear is amazing but for what I, from what I observed uh, on this trip was the culture now I don't want to say it was a culture shock but it was a very very different culture than what we are used to and know one of the very interesting uh, concept culturally is uh, they're a very competitive society kids at an early age are educated and pushed and pr and uh, encouraged to excel in school college and stuff like that and that push for excellence really forms the culture the culture in Japan people are extremely competitive they're in their books and at work all the time and their their social skills are very different than ours their social skills I, I you know from our eyes it looks as if they lack they're they're considered very shy very shy people they found over the years different kinds of way to bridge that shyness or their lack of uh, social skills that we're accustomed to I, I'm not saying it in a negative way I'm just trying to I'm just trying to point out how it's different than our skills so they use a lot of technology it's a gap and uh, computer computer games karaoke gaming and things like that was it, Tokyo is pretty much a, a district it's not one town one city it's built up of, of smaller towns smaller cities for example Shibuya is a little city a little district a little town within the bigger district of Tokyo Akihabara is another town or city within the Tokyo district and so on quite a few cities within Tokyo so Tokyo itself has close to 40 40 million people and the Japanese people are extremely nice very very closed and uh, they reserve to themselves they they need their safe space is is very big you cannot you cannot approach and come somebody too close because they feel uncomfortable they like their their distance they like to keep their distance we felt very safe over there there's there's absolutely no crime there's actually a joke that saying that if you lose if you lose your wallet over there there's a knock on the door and there's somebody standing giving you your wallet back and all of your bills are sorted out in the right order they are that they are that uh, organized and meticulous you know with everything very very extremely clean the cities are so clean I have some uh, footage of uh, there's absolutely no public garbage cans over there literally when you leave the house I mean when you leave the hotel room you need to go with your own little garbage garbage uh, bag and during the day you collect your own garbage and you bring it home with you and that that's where you throw it out there are no garbages uh, no garbage cans and yet the streets are not the whole four days we didn't see once 
once we didn't see a piece of paper on the floor. And the subways, the subway, the metro system is perfect. It's amazing. It's always exactly on time. You see the tracks over there? Like in New York City, you see so much garbage, so much dirt. There's rats running between the tracks. And over there, take a look. Take a look at this. This is uh, one of the uh, stations and it's pretty much like Times Square. Look, let me show you how clean everything is. Look, so look how clean it is over here. And they're having construction with work right now. So just as, just like in uh, New York City, right? Exactly. Let's see the tracks. How clean, they, how dirty they are. Look at this. This is the subway. Not one rat. Thank you. Also, people over there are extremely quiet. Even when they walk in the street, it's so quiet. My, my, look, my kids pointed out to me at one point, they said, here, Abba, listen, just let us not talk. Just walk in the street, midday, and nobody talks. Everybody is so quiet. Second, just be quiet, don't talk, and listen to the, to the street, midday, high traffic, listen. And no, I did not mute the sound. Nobody talks over here. It's so quiet. Even the cars are all electric. They don't make noise. Somebody just laughed loudly over there. Nobody talks. Nobody talks. Can you hear it? Exactly, there's absolutely no sound whatsoever. It's so strange, it's so odd. We went over there to see the little city, little area where the anime culture is really, really dominant. There's something that is really noticeable is the Japanese culture with animation and anime. I was trying to research and figure out why, why that is. From my, my understanding, since they're very, uh, like I said, competitive, they, the kids over there at the, at the young age go to school in the morning. At five o'clock in the afternoon, they leave school. And from there, they go to another school to do their homework and to get additional education. They only get home around 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. They've got no social life with friends after school. So they revert to uh, gaming, you know, computers and electronics and gaming. And they're, they're pretty much their social life is online, is, pix is pixelized. Their reality is pixelized. In many cases, it trickles. Uh, the animation, the pixelization of their reality trickles into their culture. So there, you see cartoons, like adult cartoons, and adults watch adult cartoons, and kids, and, and the whole culture of animation, also known as anime, is very dominant, very, very dominant. We went to the anime area where you had stores over there, like eight stories dealing with uh, the world of animation, of anime. Little dolls, they love collecting little, 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 these little dolls, these little figures, posters. practicing stuff. The world, the world of animation is, is such a cultural thing over here in Japan. It's a cultural thing. Kids at an early age uh, do gaming, play games, and everywhere you look, look at this whole area, looking outside, it's all about animation and 
animated figures, anime and stuff like that. The whole uh, building, it's like we're on the eighth, eighth floor. Eighth floor. And it's all about computers and gaming and appliances and... and microphone here for my uh, for my vlogging how buttons work that's for all us uh, stick one found her ideal setup there you go uh, <laughs> with her pink little uh, best setup like gaming chairs look at the mercedes chair oh my god Literally a six, we're in a six story uh, gaming, gaming arcade with all kinds of possible games. And they spend hours over here. Coordination uh, arcade. Who here remembers this? One of the first ever, you know, uh, little video games. This one is a collector's, collector's items, like $500. Remember it was like these little things. Monkey Kong, remember this? This one's like $400. Oh, so the anime world, anime uh, culture has trickled, pretty much trickled into uh, everyday life. You see girls and boys dressed up, very similar to anime figures. Even adults will follow it and uh, dress up like it and relate it. It became pretty much part of the culture. I think the background is, is what I said is the escapism from a little bit of the harsh or difficult reality. So the gaming, gaming platforms and the gaming world is where they get lost and forget about, uh, I don't know, everyday troubles and stuff like that. De-stress, integrated into their culture. Uh, this anime, you see it in stores, you see it in restaurants. For example, is, was that uh, uh, maid, maid cafe where uh, girls dressed up like anime uh, figures, anime style. And a lot of people come here, a lot of times you see younger, younger kids coming into uh, these cafes and sitting down and having a small conversation, very excited about talking you know, to a, a real, a real world person. And uh, this animated figure maybe makes life easier for them to relate to people in real life. Everywhere you see over here, stores, shops, uh, electronics, gaming, animated world, and uh, clothing, everywhere. See the girls are videotaping that animated poster and look at that see okay this is a workstation in case you need to get some work done in the middle of the train station over here just get in and just there's a little chair and a place to work you got some napkins over here, animated napkins. In case you needed animated napkins, of course. Here's Denny's and a little banana thing and so cool. This is really cool. Here we go. I love this one the most. <laughs> I'm here with my donor. <laughs> there were girls 
dressed like uh, like dolls over there on the street. Boys dressed like uh, like animated uh, animated figures. At one point, we went to a a cafe, which is called a maid a maid cafe. The girls that are uh, that serve the food and stuff and entertainment, they're dressed like dolls, like maids, and they speak like childish little dolls. And, and you see these young guys sitting, going to these bars just so they can, you know, socialize, socialize with, with these figures that may be a little bit somewhat familiar to them because them spending time on, the, on their computers in their anime world. So when they see in real life a girl that's kind of half, half human, half animated, maybe it makes... Uh, life a little bit easier for them the less embarrassed this is where we're going to now if you don't mind there are seven stores in this Akihabara please go there Okay. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Well, we're trying to get into one of them. It's very, very busy, and it's funny because she she just used uh, Google Google Translate Google Translate to our as you've seen. So it's pretty cool. We're gonna go somewhere else. They're pretty busy. It's lunchtime now, but it's a funny, funny interaction, funny experience. <laughs> This is where I want, this is where I want to be served, right, right here. Actually, a picture of me from the IDF. Yeah, from her from the IDF, sure. <laughs> We're gonna go drink coffee. She's gonna serve us our coffee, and we better pay the bill or else. Okay, guys, we're going in this adult store. Uh, disclaimer. If you're not, uh, if you're underage and don't appreciate this stuff, I'm just showing you the culture. I'm just showing you uh, the culture pretty much. So if you're offended by it, I apologize. Just don't watch it and jump to, otherwise just enjoy the culture. It's just found a cordless phone, but it's not cordless. It's actually, it's got a line connected. <laughs> they got a simulator over here. I love simulator training. That was it was like the whole cultural aspect is just so different than what we're of and it's fascinating they are very nice people very very nice people japan is a shrinking nation now what i mean is the demographics of japan since your urbanization and 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 the culture and the and the population moving from the rural areas into the bigger cities they moved into smaller houses and uh they have a shrinking population. There are very few kids. There's one thing that I was really surprised to see. More and more couples, younger couples, decide not to have kids because that uh, affects their career. So if a couple has a kid, it's, it slows down both of their careers. The majority of younger couples uh, decide not to have kids. Japan's population is is in a decline for more than t two decades already and they literally don't have enough working uh, force at the ages of uh, 30 to 50 which is uh, the age where uh, society contributes to the GDP to the you know to the growth of the country. So you see more and more older people and very few kids now, since a lot of them uh, don't have kids, instead they have dogs. And they treat the dogs just like they treat kids. So we saw so many dogs being dressed up in, in clothes like kids and uh, being walked around on strollers, like in strollers and baby strollers. Hello. 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 Can I touch? Hey. Hello. Hello. This <laughs> is Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I 
The Japan's demographics, it's a country that's actually shrinking in its size. Its population is shrinking. They have a negative, negative growth of population. You see less and less children over here. You see less and less kids. You see more and more actually uh, people walking with dogs, one or two dogs. Oh my god, jeans. Hey, look at the chihuahua. I love your jeans. I love your jeans, buddy. I love your jeans. Where'd you get those? Thank you. Yes. Oh my god. Look at that jeans. I love your jeans, buddy. I love the jeans. Oh my god, come over here. Get the Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, so cute. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You want to take a look at the photo? Wow. <laughs> now in terms of uh, food, I'm not a f uh, not a seafood guy. Uh, meaning, I, I don't I don't like seafood, and I don't like fish either. Okay, and their diet is based a lot on seafood, fish, seafood, and uh, rice and noodles. But their main protein is uh, seafood. So I was struggling. Uh, I did have a few burgers over there, and I did have ramen. You, I'm sure you know what ramen is. Uh, mainly noodles and uh, some uh, steamed vegetables inside, a soup, and they throw in a few pieces of small pieces of uh, chicken. That's what I went for. So conveyor belt, waiting for our luggage. We're gonna pick up our luggage. I'm not a sushi guy, but the kids wanted to have it, so I'm gonna give it a try. We got here some egg stuff. This one? I don't like seafood at all. Like, no, this uh, three. Ginger. Holy moly. We love ginger. Thank you. Lama Lovil has wanted on the conveyor belt. Getting some tea? What is that? Oh, there you go. Wasabi. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, where's my tuna fish going away? <laughs> my shrimp running away. Now look at omelet sushi. And it's got a little seaweed around it. I don't even like seaweed. That's mackerel. Tuna. Okay, she only got her vegan avoca uh, avocado roll. Cucumber, this one's cucumber. Cucumber roll. <laughs> got hot pepper, tuna roll. Means yeah, tuna. I'm gonna try uh, an omelet roll. There we go. Ooh, la la la. I don't know, I'm supposed to. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an experience. <laughs> I'll have it. What is that, squid? Maybe. Whoa, flatfish that's fin. a flatfish fin. Flatfish it's fin. a fin. A fin? With the wasabi inside. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> they, they build... You build your, your dishes as you go. They stack it up and that's how they price it. Each each color of plate has a different price to it and then they, they charge you by the the price that you take you took from over here. That costs us that's over that's over there like four hundred dollars right there. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway there. <laughs>
<laughs> Almost done. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have this, this dude here. I want that shrimp just the way it is. Just gonna eat that shrimp up. I just. <laughs> I mean, it's a cultural thing and it's, uh, it's, but no way, no way, <laughs> no way. And I finally found what to eat here. I'm going to have my, uh, mochi, mochi, mochi ice cream, mochi ice cream. I was kind of struggling. I can't, I mean, I don't want to say you might find it difficult because there's, there was meat, there's hamburgers, there's steaks. There's, uh, something called, they called yakitori. Yakitori is pretty much skewers on a grill. Skewers on a grill. So you can find chicken on skewers and mainly seafood on the squid. Squid and octopus. <laughs> There's no octopus? Squid, only squid. Ah, only squid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Guys, having this okay. fish on a cob. <laughs> Looks like it's moving. <laughs> you sure you want to eat it? It's a cabbage patty <laughs> with pancake kind of stuff. Yeah. Temple over here, pagoda, and a little fair, not fair, but a few uh, booths around food and stuff. Hi, that's cool. Banana? Got black dip tongue. Uh, rib of a Japanese cattle. That's, I guess, the black. Oh, that's a black pig tongue right there. You got some squid and octopus. Foot of a squid. It's like one foot or one foot like that shell. Ah, there's an octopus, baby octopus. Dango. What is it? I have no idea. <laughs> but it's vegan. What is some kind of wheat? Rice. Rice flour. Rice flour. Rice flour. Rice flour. And rice flour with What'd you get? Same same concept? Same concept. Rice flour. It's a uh, leaf. Something. It's a leaf. <laughs> a leaf with the something. cherry blossoms inside the flower. Oh. Enjoy. <laughs> so that that was my my kids over there. They're they've been traveling over there for uh, like a month and a half already. So they're used to the food. Their palate is already accustomed to the specific tastes. Um, they were good, but I was like, I wasn't having the the time of my life when it came to food. The first day that we were there. The kids took me to a famous crossroad, an intersection in Shibuya, a small city within Tokyo, where they have the busiest crosswalk, uh, crosswalk in the world. We're in Shibuya, the busiest crossroad in the world. The busiest. Take a look at this. How insane is that? How insane? How crazy is that, huh? Now what surprised me a lot in Japan is I was expecting I really was expecting to see tons of Japanese motorcycles metric motorcycles because you know I've been to Thailand and uh, India they all have it's a, like a two-wheel nation in uh, Thailand and in India so I was pretty much uh, expecting to see a big amount of two wheels you know during the whole all four days all four days where I was when I was there I saw on the streets maybe six motorcycles that's it maybe they are trying to encourage cyclists from staying out of the cities for for pollution maybe and putting a lot of taxes on uh motorcycles or something because i have no clue they were just like like i said six about six motorcycles the whole time Did it! Did 
Beleza. I was expecting to see thousands and thousands of them and they just uh there were just no motorcycles over there. One thing I like to do when I go to a new destination ever since I started uh you know this YouTube journey of mine is to go to a Harley dealership. So finally made it to Harley Davidson in Tokyo.